Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. Well, today we're going to talk about this little guy, the Dialeron, which comes in different flavors for different vintage portable computers, like our Auto 100 here, or this one's actually for an NEC. So we'll jump right in and see how these guys work and see how you can even program one of the ROM slots yourself. Let's get started. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this episode. They offer an excellent quick turn PCB prototyping service, which now has a free upgrade to the 150-160 temperature range. They also offer a wide range of services that allow you to go from idea to a finished product, including CNC machining, 3D printing, injection molding, PCB assembly. Go on over to pcbway.com OEM to find out more. Today I'm going to demonstrate the dial rom on this Model 100 here because I want to add this ROM to it, which is for a weather station data collection type of system. So you're asking yourself, what exactly is a dial rom then? Well, it is a large capacity flash chip with a rotary dip switch. And to select a ROM image on here, you rotate the dip switch around to that ROM image. To install it, you install it like you would any other option ROM for that computer. For instance, on this Model T, I'll pop the hatch open here. And I'll rotate this around this way. Some of these older portable computers use this Molex socket. And there is a carrier for each circuit board. Some like the NEC just use a regular dip socket. So that comes in a regular dip format. And then you refer to the PDF that you can uh, download from the product page and you find out which dip switch setting to set it to. I want to use MS-DOS, so I'm going to set it to position F like that and that's all there is to it. Now, since this acts like any other normal option ROM, the same restrictions apply. I can't just switch this back and forth willy-nilly because back in the days of these computers, uh, various option ROMs did not always play together nicely. So uh, to get certain things to work, you might have to jump through some hoops and there are different option ROMs that you're not going to be able to uh, switch between easily. They just don't play nice together. We can put our cover back on. I'm starting from a freshly reset state. And to then enable this option ROM, you do it just like you would for a vintage option ROM. In this case, on the Model 100, I go into basic and I can refer to the PDF that you can download from the product page. And it says to install this ROM, I go call 63013,1. Call 63013,1 and you can see now we've got TS-DOS. It's that easy. And TS-DOS is one of those programs, it hooks into a lot of systems resources and it may not play nice with some other ROMs. Uh, so maybe a different disk manager would be a better choice in that case, but TS-DOS is pretty powerful. I know that for this particular ROM, it and TS-DOS do not play nicely together. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. And the directions for removal are in here too. So the first thing I want to do is press F5 for DOS off. There we go. And F8 to go back in here. Go back into basic and type in kill TS-DOS. Okay, now we'll look at how to get this guy on to our dialer rom. I have a TL866 EEPROM programmer here, and I've got that software brought up on the computer. And inserted into the programmer, I have an adapter, which you can get on the website. This just goes from a DIP40 
to a reversed PLCC32. Uh, it's just a modified PLCC socket uh, designed so we can plug this chip in upside down. Uh, to program our dial-a-ROM, I want to set the switch to zero, like that. And the ones in the carriers just pop out. If you have a dial-a-ROM that is already in the DIP format, you don't need this adapter. There is a dot on top of the package here, which indicates the direction of pin 1. There's also a little wedge taken out of the corner here. That goes this direction into the adapter. And you want to make sure it's seated all the way in there. And then hold it down. And what I'm going to do now is ask it to read from the part. And I've already set the device type in the software to SST39S F040. Okay, it took about six seconds to read. And we can see here that we do have a lot of different stuff in memory. Oh, it's self-ejecting. Now, I want to save a copy of this as um, Dial-A-ROM Model T Master. So I have a copy as it was delivered in case I messed something up. There we go. Now, the file I want to save to this, the one for this ROM, I already have the binary for that. And if we refer back to the PDF cheat sheet that you can download, it not only tells you the switch position for the things that are already come in the, the dial rom it tells you the starting address inside the flash. I'm going to replace switch position 0 here. Uh, which it starts at address 78,000 in hex because this is for a model 200 only and I'm using this dial around many model 100 and the TL866 software makes this really easy we can go file open I'm going to select that hoot ROM and say open and then I'm going to say from this the file starting address 0 in other words from the beginning of the file I want to put it in the buffer starting at address 78 uh, thousand in hex and then click OK. Now if we find uh, 78,000 there we go and we see it says hoot right there. Some ROMs will have their name about the fifth line down, some don't. And I will take my dialer on board. I'm going to put back in the adapter since I have this style. Make sure it's snapped all the way in there and I'm going to hold it and select program. And I have erase before program. Click down here. Check program. Program. And if it comes up and says it doesn't read the ID right, you're not, you don't have the chip seated in there right. This will take maybe 30 seconds or so to program and you just gotta keep some pressure on that. This is a lot less expensive way to have a programming adapter than a programming clip because those can be you know 40 or 50 dollars a piece and this is 10 bucks and it works great. There we go it took about 39 seconds to program And six seconds to verify, so you know, less than or six seconds. Anyhow, six. Anyhow, it didn't take too long, you know, a minute or so. And we're done with that. Now we've got our dialer arm out of there. Now this dialer arm board has a little notch out of this top left corner. There is a little wedge matching here, so it goes in that direction because. The carriers are keyed, so they only plug in one way. Now we have that done, and I'm going to save this file as dial a ROM with hoot. How about dial a ROM MT with hoot? I'll kind of keep my naming convention the same. Save. All right. And Oh, you know what? 
it did not add bin on here automatically for me. Okay, I'm going to do that. So we can see that our combined image size for all 16 uh, 32K images is 512K. That makes sense. The Hoot image by itself is 32K. That makes sense. So we should have a good uh, new selection here on our ROM. We'll go ahead and try that on the bottom 100. Okay, we've got our dialer ROM over here, and you see there's two notches here and one notch here that corresponds with one and two here. And of course, if you've got a computer with a dip version, you know how dip chips work. Plug that in. We installed our new image in slot zero, which I am pointed at right here, so we should be good to go. Oops, that's backwards. There, okay. I'll get you zoomed in on the screen here. Okay, here we go. Once again, I am starting out in a freshly reset condition because that is what uh, the manual for this software recommended. Luckily, I did get the manual, which is really extensive. You can see here are the directions it uh, gives for starting this up. And it suggests typing in this little starter program. You say XR string equals I think OWL stands for offsite or onsite weather logger and who is the software that's kind of the the naming convention there and then we do call 63012 apostrophe plus. Now these two characters after the call it's picking up as uh, arguments. And then save, oops, save as uh, hoot and run. And this takes a little while to set itself up. It's going through now, I believe, and uh, trying to uh, display a reading from each sensor. And we don't have anything hooked up. The, the board for this, the data collection board, plugs into the serial port here. And from here we can go back to the main menu by going F5 and then colon Q for quit. There we go. You can see we've got Howdio, Aldio, and HootBA. HootBA is the main program. Uh, Howl and Owl. Uh, are text files, but they're like a script file. They tell HootBA what to do. And this manual is super. It's very extensive. It tells you all sorts of things on how to configure it. You can do lots of things with it. So I've got a lot more experimentation to do uh, before trying to use this, and I'll do a video on that because this is pretty spiffy. I'm really impressed so far uh, with everything it does. I didn't think it would be this extensive. And because of these new dial ROMs, I was able to uh, easily add that program to my Model 100, and I'm hoping I can find a way to switch between ROM images kind of uh, easily. But the way this program was designed is this is going to be mounted in a box somewhere with the data logging equipment for a long-term use. Anyhow, it works great. Well, there we have our Dialerom. Well, this was designed by my friend, the same one who did the backpack drive, and he comes up with this stuff almost faster than I can keep up with him. I've only had these in my hands for a couple weeks and found them extremely useful so far. 
They are not as fancy. They don't do everything like a Rex would for a Model T computer, but they're simpler and they're less expensive. So you have an option, you know, depending on what you want to do. Uh, for computers like the Epson HX20 PX8, it's about the only choice out there for a selectable uh, option ROM type of thing. Speaking of the PX8, it has a couple sockets in it, and there are a few programs that are designed to use both sockets. So if you want to run one of those programs, you look on the sheet here, and in gray it lists the two programs that take up multiple sockets. So if you want to use these, you need two dial ROMs plug one into each socket and set the switches for part one and part two of that program and you're good to go. And if you don't want to run these programs on your PX8 then you just need one dial around. But heck, buy two. Um, to recap, if you just want to use the programs that are already on the dial around, you don't need to do anything other than set the switch and follow the install directions. If you want to be able to program your own ROM images into the dial rom uh, if you've got one of the computers with the Molex type socket, you will need the programming adapter and you will need an EEPROM programmer that can handle this flash chip. Uh, any reasonably modern programmer can probably do that and I'll put a link to the directions and the web page and stuff like that below. If you have any questions or comments, well, let me know. Just leave them in that comment section down there below. I would love to hear from you. Thanks to everyone who helps support the Haybert channel through Patreon and other means. It is greatly appreciated. And until next time, bye.